Isn't it amazing how we can see the world without ever leaving our home to see other countries, visit the bridges of San Francisco, or see a rocket launch to the moon? Of course we know that video systems allow us to do all this, but how does it all work? To understand how the video camera works, we start with some history. In 1878, the individual pictures of a racehorse introduced the concept of moving pictures. From these early experiments, we learned that our persistence of vision makes the individual pictures appear to move. While making these early moving pictures, we discovered that the brain holds images for about one-fifteenth of a second. We learned that a person can perceive individual frames when the images are slower than that, maybe around 12 images per second. So if we made the frame rate faster, about 15 frames or more, it appears as continuous motion. Early movies had a frame rate of 14 to 24 images per second. The first movies were placed on film and then played back on a projector. To send the movies from one place to another required a different technology. Each picture had to be scanned quickly and then sent electronically to the place where they could be viewed. It started with television. This provided the vehicle for sending the image captured by the camera to a monitor at a distant location. The iconoscope for the camera and the kinescope for the receiver. The iconoscope is mounted behind the lens in this crude laboratory camera. The lens focuses the image of the experimental chart upon a metal plate in the tube, and the iconoscope turns the image into electricity. In a nearby laboratory, receiver, the kinescope tube is inserted. This tube receives the electrical impulses created in the iconoscope tube and recreates the image. As the tube is turned on, we see the pattern of the scanning beam of electrons that moves back and forth across its face over 13,000 times a second. And the circuits in the video camera create a stream of electrons that are directed across the sensor by the deflection plates. The sensor is scanned one line at a time. Early TV used interlace video to conserve bandwidth. It's still used today in some TV and closed circuit television systems. Interlace video uses two fields to create a frame. So now we have a video signal that can be sent to the monitor. The camera and the monitor are synchronized by locking the signal to the AC power line, which is 60 cycles per second in the US. So now we have a closed circuit television or CCTV system. How good? Is the picture? Well, this is defined by the resolution and it's measured using a test pattern. The resolution is measured by looking at a monitor and noting where the horizontal and vertical lines merge. When you can't see any black and white transitions, that's the maximum amount of resolution you can have. The vertical and horizontal resolution can be different. Vertical resolution is limited by the number of lines. NTSC has 525 lines, and that means that the maximum vertical resolution is about 262 TV lines. Horizontal resolution can be higher than vertical resolution because it is dependent on the sensor and amplifier. In many cases, the resolution of analog cameras is defined by the horizontal performance. Today, the semiconductor sensor has replaced the vacuum tube, but the cameras work in a very similar way. The CCD or CMOS sensor converts light to electric signals, which are processed by the camera's electronic circuit board. The analog CCTV system contains cameras, a multiplexer or DVR, and a monitor. All components are connected by coax cables. So that's how it all works. From the first days of television 
to today's CCTV security systems. It's amazing what has been accomplished. If you need help with your surveillance and security system, just contact Kentronics. We specialize in these high technology systems.